Hello everyone, and welcome to another beer review, <laughs> and a different location again. <laughs> I just, I just haven't found a place that I'm kind of comfortable with. There's good points and bad points from the last two locations, and uh, I'm just going to try to find a place that I can just leave my stuff set up, and it's straightforward and easy to go. Another thing, um... I tend to kind of accumulate quite a lot of beers. Um, obviously, mostly for review purposes. And sometimes it's a case that I forget what I've got. Or I've got so many, it's just not, uh, not particularly clear what I have and what I don't have. And while I did say that uh, in the last video, that was the end of... The beers from m and it turns out it's not. And it turns out it's worse than that. Because, <laughs> unbelievable. Because uh, I forgot I had this one. Which is a London Porter. <laughs> Jesus, it gets worse. It does, it actually gets worse. You think this is bad. I'll put it on the side. Whatever, turn it around. So there you go. It gets worse because not only do I have this one, I didn't realize, but I also had that one as well. <laughs> so, this is a new label, and this is the old label. I'm sure it's the same beer in the bottle, but what I will do is we'll do both of them and see if they're the same, if there's any differences, or is it just a label? And that's it, to try and kind of fool people into thinking that maybe they haven't had this one before because they maybe have bought it under this label. But basically, they're both done by the Meantime Brewery in Greenwich. They both call themselves a London Porter, which that's big boots to fill because there's also another famous London brewery that does a London Porter. And they really do a London Porter. And a very nice one it is too. So to call it a London Porter, you know, coming from the UK and being based in London, well, you're kind of uh, leaving yourself with big boots to fill. So, uh, and again, they're both saying, I think, using seven malts to create a historical recipe. Oh God, from 1750 on this one. And is it the same in, oh, from, from the mid-1700s, so they now they've changed a little bit. But yeah, we'll go through it all. Both 5.5%, so there you go. Um, we'll start off with the, the new one and, and see what it basically says. Um, using seven malts to create a historical recipe from 1750, a Swedish caramel flavour followed by a smoky maltiness. Okay. About this beer, this London Porter is brewed in Greenwich using no fewer than seven malts to create a historic recipe from the mid-1700s for a style of beer that was once synonymous with London. A perfect match meets, I'm sorry, a perfect match for meats as well as cheeses and oysters. <laughs> there we go again. Meats now. Previously, it was, was it, was it, uh, Seafood, meaty pies, and uh, beef casserole. Now, now we're on to basically just meats, any old meats, don't care, you know, because all meats are just meat, you know, they all taste the same, not a problem. As well as cheeses, same as that, it can be anything from mozzarella to gorgonzola to camembert to brie to cheddar, you know, they all exactly taste the same, you know. And of course, uh, oysters, you know. <laughs> so there's that. Now, what did the old label have to say? Why am I doing this? Seriously? But anyway, about this beer, London Porter's brewed in Greenwich using no fewer than seven malts to recreate a historic recipe from the mid-1700s for a style of beer that was once synonymous with London. A perfect match for meats as well as cheeses and oysters. <laughs> you go exactly the same. What is the point? <laughs> I think that's the only reason is they just change the the label to try and kind of trick people because if you have had it before and thought that was a bit crap and you oh, we've got another London Porter. No, it's actually the same one. And, uh, and you could say maybe they were doing it, but 
they've all changed the labels for all their kind of beers, but their beers are made by different uh, breweries. So again, you can't really say, well, maybe it's just one brewery that's made them all and decided to change the label. So, right, so we crack them open. All right, we'll start with a new one first. And uh, see what we've got. Thing is, oh, I like a porter, especially in this type of weather. So let's see what it's got. Right, for the people in the podcast, ooh, it's nice and dark, like a porter should be. Kind of a uh, a dark ruby, you can just see a little bit of right coming through, and a slightly kind of almost tanned head, off white definitely, but getting close to kind of a tanned head. So there's that one. Smell wise, maybe a little hint of coffee, maybe, but I'm getting some normal tones. I'm getting some kind of Porter smells there. I'm getting the kind of roasted malt smell. So I am. I'm getting a kind of slightly kind of bitterness of like, you know, dark chocolate. So I'm getting these type of tones. So that, that's one kind of uh, good omen. Don't do the other one. So let's see what this one gives us. <laughs> Seems an absolute idiot. So, right, let's see how this one pours. Um, this has got a bit of a lighter head, and it's slightly lighter in the body as well. It's just for people on the podcast, it's not quite as dark. It just, it's slightly lighter. So it's maybe about a shade lighter. And I can see a lot more light kind of shining through. So I'm holding both of them up to the light. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This one, which is the older label, is a lot lighter in colour compared to this one. Now let's see what this one smells like. Oh, right. Different smells. I'm getting the maltiness. I'm getting the roasted malts, but I'm getting a slight kind of candy, kind of slightly confectionery smell. I'm not getting the kind of bitter chocolate kind of aromas. So, yeah, I'm not getting the kind of bitterness so much in this one. I'm definitely getting more kind of confectionery smells. So, there you go. Right. I'll hold them both up. This hand is the new label, this hands the old label, but you can tell anyway, if you bring them up, you can actually see that this is lighter than this one. So there you go, so maybe it's not just the label. Right, who should I go for first? Age before beauty? Okay, let's go for the, the lighter, older label one first. Back into it again. Yeah, I'm getting more kind of confectionery, there is a more kind of slightly kind of sugary aromas coming from this one but it's not the kind of molasses it is actually it is kind of maybe maybe it isn't that kind of more kind of caramel smell but i'm also getting a bit of roasted malts but i'm not getting any bitterness aromas at all really so let's see what it tastes like So apparently enough is not as bad as what I thought it was going to be. What I would say is first thing I'm noticing it is lacking a bit of body. It's, a, it's slightly a bit watery. Which, trust me, compared to what it could taste like, it's not that bad from that point of view. There is some nice kind of porter flavours there, but they are feeling a bit kind of diluted and watered down a bit. 
Um, the good thing is that the smell of the kind of sugar and kind of uh, confectionery smell hasn't really kind of translated into something that's kind of sickly sweet or anything like that. So that's one good thing. But yeah. And I would notice it more, especially in the aftertaste. In the aftertaste, it's just that little bit more lighter and a bit more diluted. So you really do notice that you're not getting that kind of big kind of bitter finish. It just feels like it is kind of diluted and watered down a bit. Overall, the kind of porter flavours are there. But I would say they're not really there in the intensity you would probably expect or want. It's probably the best way of putting it. So they're there, but they are, they are a bit light, to be totally honest. But compared to what I've had with the Irish Stout and the Winter Spiced Port and everything else, um, this one, which is the old label, um is a lot more palatable and a lot more you know it's a lot more drinkable from from the kind of comparison. I feel safer um taking a proper glug of this. I couldn't take a proper glug. I was sipping them other ones because the flavours were just so bad and so kind of off and and to a certain degree unusual that yeah, they were just undrinkable that I just oh, no I just can't suffer that anymore really and yeah you're just kind of going through the motions I mean normally I don't know about other people but with me I, I, I like a good glug I like to take it what we call a, a good draw of a, of a pint or a glass of beer and uh, yeah if you taste something that really doesn't taste right then you're not going to go in and take a big draw you just fighting against it. So let's see what the new label's like. Again, with the smell, still there. It's got more of a kind of bitterness smell to it. it. does have the roasted malts. It doesn't have that kind of confectionery or kind of sugar kind of aromas. No real kind of caramels or things like that. And it just feels a bit more it were like a porter with the aromas it has more of the kind of traditional porter aromas than you'd expect compared to the older label version so let's see what it tastes like This is a strange one. We've got a slightly different mouthfeel with this one compared to the other one. But what I do notice is it's not as watery. The flavours are still a little bit dialed down a bit. Just a little bit dialed down. Not as dialed down and diluted as this one. But it just feels that like there's just a little bit more body. Not a lot. But this doesn't really give you so much of a watery kind of feel to it. As this other one does. And yeah. It's got not a bad little bit of finish to it. This is... This other one has got a little bit of finish, finish to it, but it's kind of very light. Whereas this one just seems to have a little bit more backbone, a little bit more substance to it. I'm not going to say that this is a great porter, but it's a, it's a heck of a lot better. Out of, I would say out of all the ones that I've done, including this one, this is the best. And I'm not going to say it's a great porter because it's not. But it's okay and it's drinkable. So straight away. They both, I think this one at the time cost £2.30 and the newer version is £2.50. 
So there's 20 pence of a difference. See, there you go. <laughs> Mathematics. Easy peasy, isn't it? You know? What a marvellous air. They were sitting thinking, all right, well done. All right, pot liquor. Which, of course, you're absolutely right. <laughs> you know? But yeah. I actually kind of confirmed that out loud. I was actually doing it in my head and I just actually confirmed it out loud. If everybody thinks you're saying, ah, smart arse. You know, well done. Uh, uh, uh. Primary, primary three, primary four mathematics or arithmetic. Eh? Jeez. Einstein must be shitting himself. But yeah, <laughs> but yeah, that's a kind of situation. So right now, out of the all the ones that I've tasted, so this is, of course, the fourth one, if you include this one as being a third one and then the other two, which was Aries Porter and that Winter Spice nonsense. I would say that uh, this is the best and I would say this is the most drinkable and the the one that's kind of been closer to being more of a kind of normal beer. And I would say it's actually not too bad. You've got that kind of bitterness in the aftertaste. You're getting that bit of kind of slightly molasses feel to it. So you are, so you're getting slightly kind of light coffee tones, a little bit of kind of uh, chocolate bitterness. And yeah, overall, it's actually not too bad. This one's actually not too bad. And it looks not too bad as well. So, I mean, that's quite good. Going back to the original one, which was the older label, that £2.13 a bottle. Yeah. It's a lot lighter. So it is. It, it, they actually have changed. So it's not about just the label. Yes, they're both 5.5% and they're both saying the same kind of guff in the label. But they are different in the bottle. And... I'm actually surprised at that. I actually, oh God, I'm kicking the blue tripod now. Um, I'm kind of surprised at that because I honestly thought that it would just be the, the same beer in the bottle and they were just changing the, the label just to kind of adjust things. Um, just to kind of make it more kind of uh, refreshing it and hopefully fool people into buying the product again. But the saying that though, if you have been used to buying this version and you maybe liked it, it's kind of lighter and easier drinking than say a, a kind of normal porter and it's a wee bit lighter and things like that and maybe you like it um, and it suits your palate better, then going for... This version, thinking they've just changed the label, then you're on to kind of a, a loser um, because it is different. And the flavours of this one is a bit more prominent, there's a bit more body to it, it's not as watery, and there's a bit more to the finish. Um, I'll, I'll break the flavours down, but uh, they're kind of similar. But what the major thing is, is just the intensity, it's probably the main thing, and just the kind of mouthfeel because it just seems to be a little bit more body to this one than the other one. The other one just feel a bit more watery. Um, so yeah. Yeah. I'm looking at this. The head is actually lighter. Than this one, this one's a bit more of a darker head, and overall, yeah, this one, this one's the old label one. It's not really kind of black. It's kind of has a kind of slightly kind of dark brown tone, whereas this one has more of a kind of blackish to it. But let's start off with the lighter one and break down the flavours. Starts off, you're getting a, a, a an okay level of kind of roasted malts. You're getting there, you get a little bit of sweetness there, you get a bit of grain. But the roasted malts, they just feel as if like they, they really should be on top of the grain. 
you know, the intensity factor should be more from the malted, from the roasted malts than from the actual grains. The problem is they're kind of almost even, and that really shouldn't be in a porter because it really is all about the roasted malts and the colours and everything else. I mean, obviously there's some roasted grains in there as well, but they are dialed back. The main thing is it's the roasted malts. Stout is more about the roasted grains and that's where you're getting the colour from and they are more ramped up and they are giving you different flavour profiles because you get less sweetness with the roasted grains. But the roasted grains give you less sweetness with the roasted malts you're getting a little bit more sweetness. And that's where you start getting slightly more kind of caramel or coffee tones with a porter that you wouldn't get so much with a stout. And that's a good a, a kind of a, a comparison between the two. But sometimes if you look at it, you expect to get a bit more coffee kind of flavours um, with stouts and you expect to get a little bit more kind of dark kind of chocolatey flavours with a porter. Although depending on how they've done the grains and the ratios and the recipe, you can get little coffee tones in both and you can get little kind of bitter chocolates in both. But again, it just depends what grains are using and what malts are using and again, the kind of ratios. So there is a slight crossover. They're not as clean as what they used to be, but it used to be in the past, you get more coffee tones and aromas and flavours coming from a stout and you would get more kind of slightly bitter chocolates coming from a porter. But it's uh, the waters are kind of muddied between the two now. But uh, yeah, this one is at the front of the mouth. You're getting the grain and the malt. They're kind of equal and it really shouldn't be the roasted malt at the front of the mouth. Roasted malt should be more prominent than the grains. The grains should just be kind of like backing it up as a, as a secondary flavour. And again, the sweetness should be associated with the, the roasted malts. And there is a bit of sweetness there, and it is associated with the roasted malt, but it just feels that it's just not quite strong enough. Sweetness level, yeah, it's okay. That's fine. I, I don't want it any more than what it is anyway. But... I would say it needs to have a little bit more roasted malts. It needs a bit more maltiness at the front. It's just not enough. And that's your first kind of um, identifier that this is a bit watery. Moves on to the mid tongue. And this is where the problem starts. Is you expect some of these other flavours to start to come out. You expect to get some of the the dark chocolate tones, you expect to get, um, you know, that slightly kind of dark chocolate, kind of slightly bitterness. You expect to get slightly molasses flavours there. And you also expect to get, maybe depending on the ratio of the grain, maybe a little hint of coffee there as well. But what you are getting is, you're getting a little bit, but it's just how would explain, is that, um, You're getting the slightly cocoa flavours, but the cocoa flavours are... How would you put it? Imagine it's a case as though if you make a, a nice rich hot chocolate with proper cacao or cocoa, as we say in English, but in most other languages say cacao, um, you do get that red kind of richness. There's a slightly velvetiness to it, and you also get a kind of good strong bitterness. I mean, because that's what the cacao is or cocoa is. It's, it's that really dark bitterness. It's not like you're drinking chocolates. So imagine you made a good full one, and you're just getting to the end of it, and you haven't really kind of swallowed it about yet. And you swallowed it about, and you get it, and you get that really nice kind of strong kind of bitter chocolate hit near the end of a good hot chocolate that's made with proper cacao and not just drinking chocolate. But with this one is, it feels as if like you're halfway down the hot chocolate. 
So you're getting the chocolate and the bitterness, but it's nowhere near the intensity as you'll get when you get down to the last kind of couple of sips, you know, that type of stuff. That last one where you give that and you see the colour change, it goes from a kind of a, a kind of greyish brown to, oh, it's gone really brown now, you know, that type of thing. It's the best way to try to describe it. Is it just, but just lacking in that kind of intensity. And it just feels as if it's just, the flavours feel as if they're diluted. And the mouthfeel and everything else just feels just slightly watery because it doesn't have that slightly velvety feel to the mouth. It just doesn't have that kind of um, richness in body. And not only are you noticing it in the flavours, but you're also noticing the mouthfeel. It just seems lighter in the mouth. It actually drinks more like an ale than it does like a porter or a stout where you feel it is just to be a little bit more kind of... Uh, smoother, slightly more silky, you know, that type of thing, but you're just not getting it. You're not getting that kind of velvety, smooth, silky kind of mouthfeel. You're getting a kind of lighter mouthfeel, closer to a kind of, uh, a kind of run-of-the-mill kind of ale, that type of thing. You're not even talking about rich ale or anything like that, you know, so, I mean, it's okay, but, yeah. Now, when you move on to the aftertaste, you are getting a bit of bitterness, but this is the thing. Because of the kind of slightly lacking in the flavour of the, the chocolate and there's no real any coffee, then what you're kind of feeling off of this is that the bitterness just feels slightly kind of disconnected with the, the other flavours because other flavours aren't strong enough but the bitterness, I'm not saying it's a strong bitterness, but the bitterness just seems to be a little bit more than the kind of other flavours that support it are. And it just me just gives me the impression that it is obviously water because the problem is your flavours in the aftertaste are too light. But the bitterness isn't too bad. I'm not saying it's strong. It's, in the other one, the bitterness is more in the aftertaste and you are getting a bit more bitterness. What, what I feel with this one is it just doesn't really have the connection. It feels slightly disconnected again. So the front of the mouth feels slightly disconnected and the, the aftertaste, the back of the mouth feels slightly disconnected because the bitterness just doesn't seem to be matching up with the flavour profiles because you're thinking well if the flavour profiles are to this level or intensity then you would expect the bitterness to be roughly the same and it's just not it's kind of sitting like kind of the flavours are there and the bitterness just you know a couple of rungs up the ladder but like I say these flavours are kind of quite watery so that bitterness isn't really intense in any way shape or form but it is a little bit more and it just feels that there's a dis you know it's disjointed and there's a disconnect and this one just just feels like you know like we brewed it we got this far yeah okay we've identified where some things haven't really worked out We've adjusted the recipe and everything else, and then you get this one, and it just feels that like, you know there's, there's different stages, and this is a lower stage than the newer version. So I don't obviously you can't get this version. I don't think they sell this one anymore. So and of course, so you've only got the kind of newer version, but I think you are getting a better product. Yeah, it's costing you twenty pence more a bottle, but at the end of the day you are getting a better product that I feel this one is just mm, I can see what they were trying to do but they didn't really quite achieve it whereas they got closer to what they wanted to achieve with the newer version so let's go back to the newer version and break down the flavours mm. mm -hmm. straight away it's a different animal Straight away from the front of the mouth, yeah. You've still got the grain there. But uh, you are getting a bit more roasted malts in the front of the mouth. 
again not a huge amount but enough to change the fro profile of the beer to the point that it doesn't taste as watery there is more of an imbalance between the grain flavours and the roasted malt the sweetness there which is a bit less than the kind of uh, older original kind of label and uh, the roasted malts there is a connection to that sweetness but it's more about the kind of uh, roasted malts rather than the kind of caramel sweetness and things like that so you're not really getting that so much in this one and I just feel that this is a more of a grown up but more of a mature kind of product than the other one the other one is a kind of like well it's a good it's a good one to start with if you want to kind of transition into porters and try them off. It's, it's a kind of lighter version, whereas this one, well, this is more for people that have tried porters a few times and, you know, have a better kind of uh, understanding of it, whereas that one is a, it's a good one maybe to start off with as a, as a starter and to kind of getting into porters. But, yeah, this one just... And, again, even just how it looks in the glass and everything else is a... Uh, there is a different kind of glass appearance to this one as well. I mean, not just the darkness, but just how it maintains a kind of head to it, how it laces on the glass. There is a complete difference between this one is slightly mill pondy, as you can see, whereas this one is a there is a lot more to it going on. You see, so straight away, mouthfeel big difference. Move on to the mid-tongue, yeah. You're getting a bit more bitterness, a little bit of molasses kind of flavours, things like that. Slightly chocolatey kind of bitterness. Again, it, it's nowhere near as what I would expect from a porter. A good porter, you want a little bit more intensity in these flavours. They're not quite there. They're more than the other one. But again, just not quite there. They're just slightly lacking. If you're a, a porter drinker, you will still find this a bit lighter. Not as light as the other one, but you'll still feel it. Yeah, it's kind of lacking a little bit. It's still a bit light on the actual flavours. The intensity just isn't quite there. But if you're a, a porter drinker, that's what you're kind of looking for. You're looking for these kind of flavour kind of hits. And you're not quite getting them. They're not quite satisfying but a lot better than the other one. Um, going into the aftertaste, well, this is the problem. It's got the bitterness in the aftertaste, but the problem is that it doesn't kind of really ramp up. It feels like it hits the kind of bitterness a little bit too early, so you're actually getting it a little bit earlier in the mid-tongue. And it just maintains that bitterness into the aftertaste. So it doesn't like kind of go and then ramp up into the aftertaste. It's just like linear going right across. And that's the thing that kind of highlights to me. It's a bit kind of disappointing in the aftertaste is that you just want that little bit more and it's not there. So it just basically feels that the, it just gives you the impression that the aftertaste is a little bit weak because you're not getting that kind of crescendo at the finish. Um, so what happens is you're getting maybe slightly a bit more chocolatey flavours in the aftertaste, but you're not really getting any more intensity of the bitterness. And uh, overall, I just feel that compared to the front of the mouth and the mid tongue. The aftertaste kind of slightly follows the mid tongue, where it's, it's a little bit light. But not in body. The body's okay. The body seems to be quite consistent, but it just feels a little bit lighter, just in the, the, the flavours. But overall, it's actually not too bad. It's actually not too bad as a, as a porter. I've tasted worse, and better of these two, they quite easily beat. The other offerings of the Irish, uh, the Irish stout and the, the winter spice porter. 
So what would I give them out of 10? There's a question. £2.30 versus £2.50, right? What would I, what would I say about them? Yeah, there's a question. Um, the older label or the kind of what I refer to as the original one that I bought and never got round to actually review. Um, I would say it's below average. It is watery. The flavours aren't anywhere near the intensity they need to be. And it just feels lighter in the mouthfeel. It just, the mouthfeel isn't quite right. It does give you that kind of slightly watery feel to it. Flavour intensity, not really quite there. And slightly, there's a slight imbalance between the roasting malts and the grain flavours. And overall, it's just not delivering what you'd expect from a porter. But it's still drinkable. It's okay, but it's nothing brilliant. But I would say it's below average. On on that basis, I would probably give it a three and a half. So three and a half for the original, which is this one. And uh, yeah, it's it's okay. It's, it's done really. Good. This one, um, there's a bit more to it. You can see they've made changes to the recipe. They have improved it. For me, I don't think they have improved enough. I think there's another couple of stages that they can go to to get a better product. But at least they're moving in the right direction and at least it wasn't just a label change. They actually have adjusted the product and they have improved it a bit. Not massively amount, but they have improved it enough to make this a little bit more drinkable and you could get away with this. So out of 10, what would I give this one? Um, it's not too bad. I mean, the other one I gave three and a half. Would I call this an average? Uh, not quite. I think because of how the aftertaste goes, it just needs a little bit more and everything else. There is an improvement, but not quite enough to see to have a five. So I'm going to give this one a four and a half. There is an improvement. It has got better. It's not quite there to even just to say it's an average porter, but at least they're going in the right direction. And at least both beers are palatable and drinkable, which is a heck of a lot more to be said compared to the other ones that I've tried. So this version here, gets four and a half out of ten so yeah not not too bad i mean i actually expected these to actually be a lot worse to be totally honest so at least i'm kind of pleasantly kind of surprised i thought um i'm not overly enamored with them i'll be totally honest and would i recommend them well i think the one at three and a half the original i don't think you can get anyway um this one would I recommend? No, I probably wouldn't. At four and a half and at two pound fifty a bottle, I would say, well, take that two pound fifty. Go into any other supermarket and get yourself a a bottle of London Porter from Fuller's, and enjoy that because you'll get a nice porter, and you'll enjoy it, and uh, you'll be getting a beer that's not four and a half out of ten. You'll be getting a beer that's a lot higher, and definitely above average. So. It's three and a half out of ten for the original, four and a half out of ten for the newer label version. At least they were drinkable, and I'm not swearing in this one, so it's quite good. So thanks for watching. Cheers, and bye for now.